stojí. So first, I'd like to talk a bit about uh, strategy, uh, how SWAG uh, is part, could be a part of all the old strategy, because now, right now we have uh, pretty much well-defined target users for Fedora flavors. So for, for Fedora workstations, those are mostly like developers and students and in some larger sense, those are people that produce stuff on, on computers. Uh, also, the council has set some strategic objectives, like focusing on um, the universities and students. But still, uh, the swag is pretty much produced in the, uh, the kind of chaotic way when people go to our designers and say, hey, I've got a great idea, just you know, make a design for that and let's produce it. And no one really thinks about if it's, if it's useful for, for our marketing, for our branding, if it has any, any impact on our branding or if it has any, uh, any efficiency in terms of like co converting users to contributors or getting a new users for Fedora. So first, I would like to speak a bit about uh, target audiences for like the swag we produce, because we've got two uh, distinguished groups. First one are current users. So those are people who already have some relationship with, with Fedora brand. Those are people that have been using Fedora for some time. Uh, most of them, of course, think that Fedora rocks, so they, they'd like to show that they are associated with uh, or affiliated with, with the band. And those people are usually asking for the Fedora branded, stu uh, branded stuff. That means that they can put a Fedora sticker on the computer, that they can wear a t-shirt with, you know, some, like, I'm a Fedora user or something like that. And that's where just solely branded stuff works. Like you can give them stickers with just Fedora logo, and what that's what they want. It doesn't have to have, it doesn't have to carry inform any in, uh, any information about Fedora because they are already quite familiar with uh, with the project and with the system. And they are also willing to pay for Fedora branded swag. I don't know if. It's who, who has been to fold them in Brussels, for example? And who has served the, the, uh, the Fedora booth there? I know, Matthew. Uh -huh. So like, uh, we always get a lot of people that go to our uh, table and they say, do you, do you have Fedora t-shirt? I've been, I've been using Fedora for the last 10 years and I, I just, here you have my money and give me the give me the t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and we get we get the that's it. But the thing is that Fedora doesn't really have a legal entity, so we can't really sell stuff because we can't we don't we don't have ways to receive money. Uh, the so our why would the t-shirt be sell? And then they put Fedora sticker on it, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah that's that's, that's been a struggle because we haven't been able to produce like more expensive stuff like, I don't know, hoodies, like polos or t-shirts because you can't really go uh, give those away 
at consensus in, in larger quantities. And we can't really sell it because the, our legal entity is Red Hat, and Red Hat is not interested in selling uh, swag. So, collateral. Uh, fortunately, fortunately, the they, uh, Red Hat has opened the, uh, the official Red Hat store, which still has a kind of limited uh, selection, but it's at least uh, a s the first step in a good direction. Uh, well, they've, they've been promised that if it, uh, if it proves to be working, that they will try to uh, expand this to other regions because m nowadays it's just limited to uh, North America or just the, the US. I don't know if they ship to Canada. Or uh, good question. Some of uh, you, you can get some of uh, the things shipped to other parts of the world as well, but those are just the stuff that is not imported in the US, so you can't really uh, export it. But and so and like also, if you happen to know a Red Hat employee in your country, I think that the special law didn't actually put them anywhere where they could export. Oh, okay, I didn't know. And they, you can't send it, you can't go get your friend to buy it for you. <laughs> that's not the idea. Uh, another thing, I know um, innocentickers.com, which is global, I think they're based in Europe somewhere, um, but talking with them about producing Fedora frames for people. Um, they will sell and give us swag in return. Uh, that would be really, really great. It's not finalized yet, and that means we could maybe refer it yeah. in the next few years. <laughs> yeah, like I had, I had, I had, I had a good stuff store in, in Europe as well, I think based in, in Germany, that, that I think could also be used because we'll for the official Fedora store, we also use the, the, the cool stuff store of, of Red Hat. Uh, so that's for the, uh, the current users. And then we've got uh, a subset of current users, and those are contributors. So we've got, <laughs> we've got one contributor <laughs> here. Let, 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 let's call him, for example, Ma Matthew. Small and <laughs> Yeah, uh, so this is this is an important subset of uh, the current uh, users group, uh, and we often forget about them, and we shouldn't, because uh, I've got uh, uh, an experience with producing uh, swag for, for contributors. Uh, the first one was uh, Fedora 19, sharing your scat t-shirts, and the second one was, was this t-shirt, 10 years of Fedora. This one was sent to uh, nominated contributors. No, they didn't have to be active at that time, but they had had some significant contribution in the first 10 years of Fedora. And we had great response to this. Like a lot of people were like extremely happy about that, pretty, pretty su surprised about that. It was quite uh, difficult to pull this thing of that it was uh, Gabriela who uh, asked all the teams in in uh, Fedora project to nominate people. Then he collected the addresses. Then we in uh, in Van in office overhead, overhead we packaged uh, all the t-shirts and sent them out. Uh, it was also a, a bit lo long short because we shipped pretty much all over the world. Sometimes the uh, the packages just got lost, so we had to resend them. But in, in the end, it was a big success, and I think it's it's a really nice touch for for the contributors when when they, for example, get a, a T-shirt as a as a recognition for the contributions to the project. So I'd love to do this again, and I think it's really important to do this some something like this for for contributors. So we shouldn't we shouldn't forget about this this group. And the second large group uh, uh, and the, uh, of users of our swag are potential Fedora users. I think this group is quite different from the first one uh, because they, uh, the swag uh, for them should be also quite different. Those people, uh, uh, yeah, they should be no. <laughs> They are not. Uh, uh, they are not very interested in federal branded uh, stuff, uh, yeah, yeah, because 
uh, because they have no relationship with, with the brand yet. For them, well, imagine uh, a person who goes to uh, some open source conference and ends up at uh, uh, by the Fedora table. And for, for this person, uh, the Fedora logo is just some weird variation of Facebook logo. <laughs> so it doesn't, does, doesn't make a lot of sense to give him just you know, a sticker because you know, such a sticker is not even a, an incentive to try Fedora. Well, it could serve as a reminder if you know, he or she finds it in, in a bag uh, at home, but not, not really a good one, a good reminder. It doesn't carry any information, it doesn't even carry a, a URL or whatever, or the, even the name of, uh, of the project of the, or the product. So I, I think that the uh, direct solely uh, federal branded stuff just is not very suitable for this large group of users. On the other hand, they still want to learn about Fedora. So they, they don't have any information, they get some uh, introduction at, uh, at the Fedora table at the conference, but it, they would like to find more about the Fedora and then potentially try it. So what we produce currently, so I'm going to walk, to, uh, walk you through what uh, the most uh, frequent swag we produce nowadays. So it's typically stickers, so those, those are pretty, pretty much all the basic stickers we produce. So this is, this is like Evergreen, this, we've been producing for years, the big federal logo. Uh, then we also produce skate badges that's the f uh, powered uh, by Fedora, that you can it somehow imitate the uh, the window stickers they, uh, <laughs> the vendors put on on laptops and then with the introduction of, of Fedora flavors we also produce uh, Fedora flavor stickers those are also quite popular I was actually quite surprised that the, the server and cloud stickers uh, are relative, relatively popular to relatively to workstation like the workstation is still uh, the, mo the most popular, but server and cloud are also it's quite. Like 68 percent, 14 percent, 5 percent. Uh, yeah, if it <laughs> could be, yeah, I think it's like uh, 50 percent for workstation and then 50 percent for the there, pretty much. One one sticker we do is once in September, the little window breaks on the keyboard. Ah, that's. Yeah, that's what I was talking. Oh, uh, wanted to sorry. talk about. I don't have a picture of it, but you can you can check it on my laptop because I have it. We just that's like the newest addition to our stickers. We okay. produced that just just recently. And yeah, like uh, people had been asking us about this for a long time that they just want to uh, cover the, the Windows logo on the keyboard. So we finally like produced that. So now you can have. Uh, tiny Fedora logo instead. So we produce that, we have it, we have it in, in EMEA. I just need to spread the information about the, the purpose, purpose because we started packaging it and then I mentioned that in one of, at one of the, the Fedora ambassadors meetings and but some people were like, oh, so this, so it's for the keyboard, for the, the Windows key. I, when, I, when I got it in the package, I was wondering what what are those small, tiny Fedora stickers? So yeah, yeah, we have it as like the newest edition. Another thing, this is this is what we don't produce anymore because we, I think uh, it would drive uh, Mo crazy if she <laughs> saw it <laughs> because it violates a, a few. A lot of okay, a lot of uh, Fedora uh, logo guidelines. We, those were produced by Niku like a, a lot of uh, many years ago. Uh, the thing is that people still ask for them, and I still think we should have some kind of uh, uh, sticker sheet with. Uh, all like different kinds of 
further out speakers, like especially the, the certificate of authenticity that uh, uh, again uh, is making fun of the, the certificate speaker for, for Windows, it uh, was quite popular. What? what? Oh, it's actually there is a there is a note that it's not it's not actually required, but uh, it's the barcode is it was still the same. It didn't, didn't change, of course. <laughs> but this is an actual number. Oh, oh yeah, 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 there is a number. Maybe you need to ask Nico. Maybe there is there is some hidden meaning in, in it. Yeah. <laughs> then we also produce uh, buttons and pins. Uh, so those are uh, the buttons that uh, that's like also uh, again we've been producing them for for a long time. Pins are quite similar; they're just uh, smaller, and they've got the some kind of like needle that you stick it in your uh, <laughs> oh. Well, actually, I, I I saw some girls using it as earrings. Yeah. yeah. So you can actually stick it in your ear. <laughs> yes. But last we had a four F uh, uh, pin. Is there a possibility to make this one? Well, if I, I think it it will be cool because it's white and it's colorful. Well, yeah, we can produce those. That's not that uh, I can send you the basic graphics because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah of course. Yeah, that's and that's uh, the and the last thing, the common thing we have we uh, for users who are DVDs and those. I uh, yes, we still produce DVDs. They still some people want them. A lot of people want them for their collections. I've got a collection of Fedora DVDs from Fedora 5 until now Fedora 22. But mm -hmm. I don't think the uh, the usage for actual installation of Fedora is. If we put that SP of black DVD inside, I think nobody will go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But some point that's But still, uh, we, we, we still look at it uh, uh, from the point of view of you know, people living in like Europe or North America, but there are still countries where they actually uh, make use of DVDs because they beat uh, the connectivity pretty carefully and so on. So the Still, like uh, we, I produce like for EMEA, and EMEA also includes Africa and Middle East, and those people still require DVDs. But yes, in uh, the developed world, uh, the use for DVDs is, is very little nowadays. Uh, anyway, uh, the, uh, the DVDs also serve as a kind of incentive for uh, the, the people to, you know, when they bring it home, they just want to try it. And well, if they don't, they don't have a DVD drive, they, they still uh, a Fedora, Fedora URL, uh, so they can go to our uh, page and download it and put it on the USB stick. And if we, if we lose DVDs, then we don't really have any, any other spec with, with carry some kind of information that could lead the, the, uh, the user to, to Fedora, to install Fedora. But I'm going to talk about it a bit later. So now I'm entering the, uh, the part with swag ideas. So first, uh, t-shirts. I already, I already spoke about t-shirts for contributors. So I, I would really love to uh, produce uh, federal t-shirts again. Like my, my experience is that people mostly prefer blue t-shirts like we, we, we've been producing uh, black t-shirts for a long time because you can put pretty much any color combination uh, except for black of course on it and it, it works on the other hand just people like Fedora has like blue as the main color and people just prefer you know wearing blue t-shirts because they can recognize from distance that they are not Ubuntu fans. <laughs> uh, so that's why that was one of the reasons why the 10 years of Fedora uh, t-shirt was so popular because it was blue and it had big Fedora logo on the front. 
And I would also like to produce user t-shirts for like long-term users when, as, as I mentioned, post them when someone who's been using uh, Fedora for a long time, he or she is like fairly enthusiastic about it, that I, that doesn't mean we would give the t-shirts away like to anyone, but if you have a conversation for like 15, 20 minutes with someone who is like really enthusiastic about Fedora, then you can just take uh, and give me uh, give him the t-shirt. So we have, for example, 50 t-shirts for the whole of them that fit, would still satisfy the, uh, the, the long-term lawyer users and it wouldn't uh, require a lot of resources from, from our budget. So that's also one of the ideas I would like to implement, to have to have some limited number of t-shirts that we could give away to like a long term loyal user. Yes? Yeah, so do you think you have on your slides, do you think that should be the same shirt or a different one? I think, I think it's the same one. The same one? I'm not sure. Like if we if you wanna be recognized as a contributor, I think that it should be something special. I think there is still a difference between contribution to uh, Fedora and spending 15 or 20 minutes at uh, the booth and be enthusiastic about, about Fedora. Yeah, but but one, one, or how yeah, but one, one could be like, for example, like Fedora contributor, the other one would be like Fedora user or something like that. Uh, I know the design. I, too bad no, uh, none of the designers is here, but yeah, something like this. But I still think that the uh, t-shirts that are for contributors should be just for contributors. Okay. And also, Matthew had a uh, good idea about how to how to limit uh, uh, the uh, the t-shirt giveaway. For example, that we uh, for big events we've got special event badges, so. Some people, uh, for example, at FOSDEM came to us and we had the, the papers about the information how to get the badge and people who didn't know anything about Fedora badges asked what it was about. So we explained them and it would be nice to have some follow-up, for example, to tell them, well, if you come back here like during the conference and you show us that you, you've created a fast account and you got this uh, badge as your first one, then you will get a t-shirt. So, and then we, we could actually know what what people signed up at the conference uh, for uh, in the fast system and for that badge, and we could actu actually tag them later and 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 see after like for example six months if this person uh, somehow followed up and and got. Uh, more involved in Fedora, got more badges, and that actually this thing works, that we, we got like a new enthusiastic user or even contributor. And you can make them for after you have two sets, because yeah. those are a lot more expensive than the GPUs, and so it's like giving those away. A lot of people want to just come and take them because free USB sticks. <laughs>
that's what I mentioned, that Fedora doesn't have a legal entity, so we can't really sell it. And uh, Well, our legal entity is Red Hat, and Red Hat is not really interested in selling T-shirts at conferences. So that, that's been our struggle for, uh, for many years, that we can't really produce and give away more expensive stuff because it drags a lot of money from our budget and we can't get any income for that. No. Well, uh, now we've got the, the official uh, Fedora store, which is run uh, by the company that uh, also runs the Red Hat store, but that's the only way. Let's move on from the, <laughs> from the Okay, so <laughs> so then the the flyers like there was a pretty heated discussion on the market. It was marketing mailing list that people. Uh, there were two two groups. One was me and Ankur, and the other one was pretty much everyone else. So. <laughs> Uh, argued about arguing about if we should produce flyers, and I still think it's uh, the flyers make sense, and they make sense for the potential users, because as I said at the beginning, and I what what you through uh, all this work we produce, it's all about just federal branding, and except for the DVD, it doesn't carry any information that that person can can bring from our uh, table to, to home and make him to install Fedora. So uh, I, I think the, uh, the consensus in the end was that we should or we'd like to produce at least the Fedora uh, flavor flyers. No? I know more and more. Yeah. Uh, flavors are the, the, the products that are in your federal workstation, okay. cloud and server, we can't uh, call them products anymore. Um, so I don't know what the... Additions. Uh, additions, okay. Fine. So it's, so it's products, but you cannot call it products until the flavors are issued. Yeah, so... Um,
The reason why I'm in favor of flyers is that we don't really have any other collateral that carry any any information. I remember that several times I got into the situation when I actually had to write a URL to federalproject.org for uh, a user because we didn't have anything that would uh, gi give him this information. So we on we have stickers. We got a bunch of stuff with federal logo, but we don't really have anything for the potential users. So, and I, thi I think the flyers may not be ideal. On the other hand, I've got, for example, experience with the Fedora, the first Fedora Cloud flyer, which was done last minute, and the, the design was not ideal. On the other hand, we painted on like really like uh, heavy, nice paper, and. For example, at Linux Con Europe, it ran out uh, much faster than any other sticker or whatever on our table. Nobody was suggesting um, that uh, Keith do that was released a while ago. It was basically foldable things that were yep. pulled into a sheet that have um, common Linux commands there as an alternative to flyers. And I have a strong opinion on that, but that might be another thing that we should yeah, do. That's That's definitely, yeah, but it's, uh, yeah, it's somewhere in between. It's already for like a bit extent users because you can't really expose the system control commands to like a new Linux user or something. It doesn't have to go to the it's just, it's just about the form, right? Yeah. Ah, here he can. That's the second time someone mentions uh, personal. Yeah, sorry, I missed, but we had a very interesting discussion. That's actually that's actually second time today. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, this is the thing I'd like to uh, see back. Uh, definitely, the thing is that uh, no one has really updated it since we switched to systemd. So all, um, many of those commands are already outdated. Yeah. I had to search for the sources a long time, and then I said more than one time. Definitely, those would be nice. Yeah. Yeah, but let's let's move with our. Yeah. That's all. That's actually yeah, a good a good idea. I was actually thinking about it as well that we could have something for all already. Uh, existing users, but uh, like something that would uh, make them switch to contributors to show them the ways how they can contribute. Maybe some. Some poster of Fedora would be interesting. Yeah, but it's definitely yeah something something to have for the, the existing user base, but not only like Fedora branding, but that's something that would make them or help them switch into a federal contributor. That would be also a nice idea. Anyway, I, as I uh, mentioned uh, during the slides uh, about DVDs, uh, so DVDs are going away. Uh, we discussed that. Uh, USB sticks should be their natural success. So yes. Uh, he was present uh, at Kutron
But they've got, yeah, C is overwhelmed with C, so the outcomes aren't more expensive. And like, I've done like really large research, uh, not only me, but a lot of other people, and we haven't found, I, I mean, uh, uh, a USB stick from a reliable source that was cheaper than five dollars. And if, uh, the, the DVD, uh, the DVD we produced is for uh, 35 cents. USB stick was, was more expensive. Yeah, 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 that's, uh, so it's really like 10 times more expensive and the thing is that the, uh, the cheapest, the, the price is not going down, rather the capacity is going up, so instead of like a few years ago the cheapest ones were 1 gigabyte, now it's, uh, then it was 2 gigs, now 4 gigs and so on, the minimal price is still the same, the capacity is going up, so I don't really have a hope that uh, the gap between the price of DVDs and USB sticks is going to be smaller in the future. So that's one problem. Another problem is that uh, the USB sticks are not reliable. If you buy the cheapest ones, even from 30 cent source, uh, easily uh, one out of five is, is bad, it's not working. And uh, also another problem is that it takes too much time to to load them with, uh, with stuff. I, I don't know if uh, any one of you have uh, has ever loaded Fedora on USB stick. I've done it several times. I think the largest batch was like 30 USB sticks and it took me, it was a job for like one or two days. And it, usually the, the, the cheapest ones are also really slow. So. Uh, are there companies that will load, that will load the Amazon to the USB yes, stick? Yeah, the, for example, the company that produces DVDs for us also offers USB sticks and they have a service that and you can give them the, uh, the contents and they will load it on it. Oh, okay. And I was wondering if there's a secret possibility of, uh, I don't know if such a thing exists, of a USB ROM. Yeah, on, on the back, you said people would be the great model. Yeah. Uh, yeah. USB ROM is a bit more expensive. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. the SD card could be a bit cheaper, but not that much. And then we also we also explore the. It's quite cheap, right? That that are just a chip which is on the front of the USB key, and yeah. they can only load a little bit of data. Then we thought, okay, let's put a URL, then get the door on it. And even this one was more expensive. Yeah, it was. You can see more around the paper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, no, that's the it thing, that it's not an installation. The point is, you put it in your USB, and your browser opens, and starts to it. So you don't have to type, you know? Anyway. Yeah, you can, you can add paper to it, uh, so you can what was the question? information on the paper. Okay. Yeah. If you have that's something very low capacity, and I don't know how low capacity you can go with the USB stick, you might be affordable, but one of the issues that I was working on, I had to So it's like 200 megs. <laughs> Like that is so. Yeah, that's what I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago. That yeah, like the uh, no, uh, yeah, the, the capacity goes up, uh, but the price is the min the minimal price is still the same. That's the problem. It's not like you would have one gig USB stick and the price would be going down. But now no one is pretty much producing one gigabit U USB sticks, and they just add capacity and. So what we use USB sticks for in our event is sort of like a, a special thing. It's like the user is engaging you for a long period of time. You're using your clockwork. You're talking to me about the um, um, the green the OX, you know, one laptop style that I pull out a three round stick and hand it to a teacher, you know, who's interested in it, or the Fedora cam we were giving out. The other thing you can do is if you have a user who's uh, using you know, drawing a graphic and saving it, they can save it to the USB stick. Now they have that USB stick with the live image and the artwork or whatever they created, and they're gonna take it home and they will run it. So now you have somebody who may become a Fedora user. Yeah. Well, we could definitely find a way how to do some limited 
give away of USB sticks uh, under some, some condition as we uh, spoke about it uh, uh, earlier. But it's not, but it's right now it's not definitely a replacement uh, for DVDs in a way that we can produce 2,000 USB sticks and give, mm -hmm. the, give them away to anyone. Anyway, uh, I am trying uh, like a dif no, different replacement for that. So in uh, like the, the Czech Fedora community, we've been working on a guide that should get uh, like a new user from a Fedora booth. So you you visit a Fedora booth at some event, and you get this guide, and that guide should uh, introduce you to Fedora to. Uh, tell you where Fedora, where to download Fedora, how to get it on a USB stick, how to install it, how to start using it. So it should get you from a like Fedora booth to like a, a beginner, beginner user. Uh, I'm trying a slightly different approach. So I uh, started it as a, as a pilot in uh, for the Czech Republic. So we wrote it in, in Czech. Uh, we are going to, uh, we are finishing the content, uh, we'd like to have it painted by the end of September so that we are ready for like the, the school year so that we can give, give them away at uh, universities to students. And if it proves to be useful, we'd like to make it a global effort and we would translate it into, into English, get uh, more feedback from, from uh, uh, other parts of the community and then we can uh, distribute this thing globally. Uh, it's supposed to be a book about 20 to 30 pages, uh, A5 format. So pretty small, it should be pretty cheap to, to paint. I don't know, like... Do you have to go away from a size format as Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. but that's an implementation detail, pretty much. No, it's not that easy as you think. Why? You know, if I print something in German, I will definitely use an ISP profile from Tosla. If I print something in Czech, I will uh, use an EPI uh, ISP profile. In uh, US, it's more in Geek, I will give an ISP and You know, it's Yeah, that's the that's what I want to do. Uh, well, well um, let me say this: in Germany, we would be <laughs> scared to give away the users with English content. So well, I can find it. I can find it in German and send it to Germany. English is is more understandable as Czech, you know. Um, so you have to translate it. And there's a lot of effort you want to put in. You have such things. It's the same like flyers. We, we, we stop on purpose not to put the flyer anymore. So what's purpose? And the purpose is not fun. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's see how it's going to work. Yeah, you can have a book, okay? And it's not <laughs> as tried in Czech Republic. Yeah. My book in Czech Republic <laughs> walks up in the gamer country. Okay? But you yeah. have a discussion of anyone. Well, I think the users are very similar to the almost all countries. No, uh, no. Well, they do. I can, I, you send me 500 of your English uh, language flyer and I put away 279 in the paper tray, personally. Uh, because on a user-oriented event, I give not out more than three. But it's from the English flyer. Yeah, I think their relationship is further down the line. Have you worked with the 
Mm, that's the that's the thing we want to focus on after the bylaws. How to how to make it translate easily translatable into other languages, and then how to generate the the same PDF out of it. And Yeah, we uh, we wanted to use Skybus for that in the uh, and in, uh, in the end we we chose uh, LaTeX because the the guy who had the most experience with any kind of type setting uh, said that he's more comfortable with LaTeX, so we we are using LaTeX for for that. Uh, what what I uh, another thing is that we uh, we've got Maria working on the on the cover for for the guys, so this, those are like four ideas she she gave us just a couple of days ago. So if you... We saw it black on blue. Which one? This one is black on blue actually, there is not one. Yeah, you, you see even not the green green. <laughs> I mean, already. no, I don't like the same. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I actually like this one because I, li I actually like this one because this is this is simple and a uh, good idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is this is still working in process, so they don't take this as as final uh, version. But this is like the, uh, like people I I talk uh, I show those two uh, like those two the most so those are probably for those a bit more so anyway that's the that's the the user guide or getting started with hardware guide so when I oh when <laughs> <laughs> whatever don't use that <laughs> don't, don't use the email contact. <laughs> yeah, I, had it, I had it on the first page, so <laughs> it's there. Okay, so any questions? We are a bit over time. Um, I, well, I give you a paper. I don't think it's the, the, the most reliable thing. Or the most experience that can be second. What you want to give, if you want to give the user when they come to the booth uh, something to remember, uh, a reason to remember. They, you want the user to want the door. So when you're at the booth, you have to give them a reason to want it for some experience. And then you need to give them a token that will remind them later on to go to get the door or the door pilot to go close it. And uh, what we gave away at, we were showing the door jam, we gave away guitar picks that said get the door, the door jam. So the user gets home and they have the guitar pick. They use the guitar pick on the guitar when they were at our booth, and they're going to go get the door. Yeah, it does. The thing is that is it really that hard to install the door? Yeah, uh, the, 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 thing, thing, uh, the thing is, for example, what we are going to have in the book, well, I'd love to have that online as well, that you can give a user an address here. This, uh, on this page, you will find the information that will get you from the starting point to in install Fedora and how to use it and so on. But we don't really have anything like that. We don't have any it's like a, a flow of uh, gui uh, like guides uh, from like what Fed what Fedora is about, what how how to get Fedora, how to install Fedora, how to get and so on, how to get it on USB stick and so on. Well, we've got all the pieces on the internet. Yeah, we've got mm -hmm. like the USB stick uh, tutorial on Wiki. We've got get Fedora 
or uh, with uh, the ISOs where you can get it. We've got, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can find uh, tutorials how to start using Gnome 3, but uh, yeah, we don't have it uh, as